Hi everyone! Today's art lesson focuses on understanding the local value and the conditional value to create a layered value which mim mimics what you see in real life. The materials that you need for this exercise are different types of graphite pencils, uh, different types of erasers, um, and possibly a blending stump. So first off, um, create a thumbnail sketch in the corner. Uh, spend so enough time on the thumbnail sketch as this is a good opportunity for you to study the composition and understand your perspective. Now draw three separate boxes that mimics the orientation of your thumbnail and label them local value conditional value, and layered value. Now referencing both the thumbnail and the real life, the setup of still life, um, I want you to complete the sketch in the local value thumbnail. And then repeat the same composition three times. So as you see this slide, um, I'm showing you how helpful the thumbnail can be in assessing the composition. You can draw a straight center vertical line down in your thumbnail. Um, that way you can gauge which object is to the right of the composition, which uh, objects are in the left of your composition. You can also identify the eye level. Um, so you can understand the cross contour lines better and then um, you can, you, you know, um, the curvature of the top and bottom of your forms. In the local value th thumbnail, I showed you how I created the structural lines as I was sketching the composition. You can use straight line constructions to, um, to differentiate the heights of various objects. Um, um, which is the height in relation to one another and then use the line of symmetry so that the forms are symmetrical on both sides You can also mark the axis of rotation for the apple notice that the axis of rotation is not straight vertical, but it's slightly slanted um, The cross contour lines are going perpendicular to that axis of rotation the cone on the left, um, you understand where the eye level is, so that's a way you can identify if the cross contour lines are curving upward or downward. As you repeat the composition three times, um, it's going to get better every single time and in the end, um, I'm sure you'll get to love the composition you're drawing. As you're working on it, you'll gain more understanding of the object you're drawing and um, the drawings are going to get better. So um, I recommend you spend um, enough time on each individual thumbnail. Um, and don't feel like you have to rush through it because you've already done it once. So if you pay attention to, to this slide, I have shown you how you can draw a complicated form like the coil on the hand, handle of uh, the met metal container. So um, uh, whenever you see complicated objects like this, spend enough time observing the object and try to understand um, the structure under, underneath the parts. In this case, it's a handle. Um, with um, complicated cross contour lines. So there is some bent on the handle. So try to examine the angles, um, how they're turning and shifting to draw the basic handle first, and then examine the coil. If you look at the coil, um, imagine you have a plastic wrap around it and you begin to see that the basic form is a cylinder. Um, draw the cylindrical form and then add the cross contours as coils.
when you're working in black and light, um, you have to consider the lightness or darkness of the color tone of the object you're drawing. This is called the local value of an object. So for this first thumbnail, you're just filling in the local value of each object without depicting any shadow or light. So the end product should look like um, very flat silhouettes of values in each object. So the black and white photo you see on the left is a great way to think about local value. Consider the subject of your drawing as if it were a black and white photo. It might take some uh, practice for you to observe objects of different colors and be able to differentiate the values. Um, the dark drapery on the back has the darkest value in this case. As far as the apple goes, um, it's red in color, and red is a primary color with high saturation, so um, the value of that red is pretty intense. Um, I would probably say it has a value of um, 6 to 7 on your value scale. The green color that you see in the logo of the paint tube is also pretty high in saturation. So it will have some value to it. I would say it does have a value of about 5. Um, about the same or even slightly darker than the metal container which is gray kind of middle in the value so I gave a value of 4 to the metal container a way to gauge if you've um, addressed the local value correct is just looking at your drawing and see if it resembles the object you depicted uh, does the value you selected for um, the apple mimic a dark toned apple or does it look like um, a green apple if it appears like a green apple you know that you have to add some darkness to that value so that it mimics the redness of the apple now we are moving on to the conditional value um, I, I sometimes also call this the conditional light because this is the value that's um, differentiated by the light source you have in the still life setup. Um, for this exercise, it might be helpful if you set up um, a direct spotlight, um, one source of light, so have a controlled light setup. And then um, for this thumbnail, you're not really thinking about the local value too much, but just focusing entirely on the light shift happening on the form. So you want to break down each individual object into different parts, specifically the highlight, light, mid-tone, and the shadow. And when you do this, um, don't forget the cast shadows as well. Cast shadows are different from core shadow in that the core shadows happen on the form whereas the cast shadows are um, casted by objects on different surfaces. So pay attention to the conditional value thumbnail on the right. Um, you see that I've divided uh, the forms into light, middle, and dark. Um, but um, it's really good if you observe the objects carefully so you're able to even differentiate the uh, transition values happening. So I have about five different values in here. Um, I have highlight, light, the midtone. Uh, the core shadows and the darkest shadows. Um, also, don't forget the reflected light with round forms such as the cone, um, the apple, and the container, and also the um, drop cloth. 
Um, if you simplify different sections of the drop cloth on the back, you will real, you will notice that the parts kind of look like warped cylinder in a form. It kind of has like a roundness to it, um, where it folds in and comes out. Um, so look at the drawing on the bottom right corner. Um, I've drawn the cross contours of that particular section you see um, in the far. Um, far left side of the drapery um, and then I've broken down those into lights, highlights, shadow, core shadow and reflected light. So it kind of has this smooth transition going on and it also looks three-dimensional in form. The reflected light is just a slightly um, lighter than the core shadow it's not going to become very visibly lighter compared to the core shadows. Um, highlight will be slightly lighter than the light area, but it's um, usually like a very small defined section of light that is the highlight. So now you're going to add the local value and the conditional value together to produce the layered value, which will be um, an image that's the most true, the truest to the reality you're seeing. There are many ways you can achieve the layered value. You can start with the local value and then subtract and let uh, add values to it um, to produce the layered value or um, sometimes a technique that I use is starting with the conditional value first and then just kind of pushing the entire value all together. Uh, regardless of which method you choose for each object, um, remember that this the layering and value process is constant push and pull. You're not going to be able to achieve the perfect value in the beginning. It's going to be a lot of layering, a lot of pulling away the value with the eraser layering again and so on uh, that's the only way you can achieve um, the correct value um, as well as create the type of expression that you want in your value drawing So you see in the local value, the, the value of the cap of the paint tube um, was not differentiated because it shares the same exact value as the drop cloth. But with the added conditional lights um, to that area, um, the form is uh, being emphasized in the layered construction. So this layered thumbnail is going to show both the local value of each object but also the light and shadows on each form. In order for you to push value, um, you want to add. Um, this method is also called the additive method or layering. So to push value, you use um, graphite to hatch, cross hatch, or you can even smear with blending stump, which typically um, pushes the value into the paper and um, produces more deep and rich value. For you to pull value, it's also called subtracting or reducting method, you use different types of erasers. So you can use the sharp corner of your plastic eraser to produce sharp highlights. You can use the kneaded eraser to take off some value slightly. And you can use the precision eraser, uh, the pencil type eraser to erase small areas. Another component that you want to pay attention to for this exercise is the hard to soft edge transition. As you're pushing and pulling the value, also pay attention to uh, the transitions of the value from light to dark. You'll notice that some areas have very hard boundary between the dark and light and the middle, um, but some areas are very soft gradual transitions, just like um, how you created two different types of value scales for the previous exercise. Um, so you can use the graphite and eraser combination to distinguish um, hard versus soft edges. 
、um, with the hard edges, you could erase with the straight edge of the eraser,、um, and then just emphasize the other end、um, of the dark so that the boundary is very sharp. Um, for soft edges, you can do、um, subtractive method of using the blending stump or even smearing with the blending stump and your finger. So in this short video clip, I am showing you、um, how I use the push and pull method of layering and subtracting to illustrate the highlighted parts. Of the drapery in the back. So the reductive method you can do with eraser is also a way you can、um, identify form in、um, forms like this,、um, such as drapery, where it's. Kind of ambiguous.、Um, a lot of forms created by the shape of light. So、um, what I did here was I used eraser to identify the shape of the light that I see,、um, and then I'm going back in with graphite to match the local value.、Um, the highlight of the black drapery is still going to be pretty dark in value because、um, of the local value. You have to consider that darker objects will have both darker shadows on them as well as darker highlights. So, chiaroscuro、um, in Italian means light and shade.、Um, chiaroscuro is a representational use of value that uses a full range, full value range, and even gradual transition from light to dark to produce three-dimensional. Volumetric and spatial effects. For this assignment, I want you to create a full value scale drawing. So,、um, I want your setup to have objects of different local value, and I want you to have direct light setup so you can examine the、um, full value range that happens on the object with the light and shade.、Um, the end product, your layered value. Will be、um, a curious guru. So this is the final piece.、Um, notice how the layered value has a full value spectrum. Full value spectrum meaning that it has values、um, from all the way zero to all the way nine of your value scale. Thank you for watching the video. I、um, hope you have fun with this assignment.